It's now my pleasure to invite Peter Hurst to the stage for our second partner presentation of the day. Peter is the executive director. He's the executive director of executive education at MIT Sloan. I'll allow him to explain what he means by the unreal approach to education. Uh, green is forward. All right, well, I'm wearing a tie and a rubber band, so I'm not quite sure what I'm doing to the uh, sartorial uh, style here. I'm Peter Hurst. Uh, I'm the Executive Director of Executive Education at the MIT Sloan School of Management. And as Jason, uh, as Jason just said, I'd like to tell you a little bit today about our experience uh, with unreally engaging online education. Uh, and if I may, I'd like to uh, imagine yourself going back with us to about Octo to October 2012. It's a Friday. Uh, we're sitting in a meeting room at, the, at Kendall Square. And uh, in a few days' time, we're going to be running with 100 executives uh, our hot new uh, program on big data with Sandy Pentland and Eric Brynolfsson, as it happens. Uh, but we've got a big problem. Uh, and the problem is that we're looking at the weather forecast, and this is what's going to hit us on Tuesday. Uh, and uh, we're not quite sure what to do about it. If we cancel this program, then it's going to take us months and months and months to, uh, to reorganize it. Uh, and you can see we're right there on, the, uh, on, on that red line. Is it going to hit us, or is it not going to hit us? Uh, so what can we do? Well, we. Uh, we decided this, uh, you know, this perfect storm that was so disastrous for so many people uh, was actually an interesting opportunity for us to try experimenting with the new, uh, new approaches to delivering uh, online, uh, and in particular looking for a solution that would enable people to participate whether or not they could travel or whether or not they wanted to travel uh, to the program. How are we going to do this? Well, you know, first thing to say, uh, those of you that may be familiar with our programs know that uh, these are programs aimed at their short courses, aimed at, at, at uh, senior executives. Uh, they're highly interactive, rely on a lot of uh, in engagement between uh, individual participants and with faculty uh, for, th for the learning experience. Uh, and, and so, you know, while we were thinking about could we use something like uh, the, the, the new edX online MOOC technologies, which many of you have heard uh, MIT has famously been uh, developing, we're really trying to solve a different problem. Uh, which is how do we uh, create these really engaging interactive uh, online learning experiences. Uh, and so, in fact, we'd already been experimenting a little bit using uh, avatar-based uh, virtual environments. Uh, our original use case was how do we enable people to come back together weeks or months after they've taken a class uh, at, at MIT. And here are some, uh, some screenshots of, of programs that uh, we ran like that. Uh, but now we were, we were going to try something very different. Our idea was, uh, could we actually enable people to, part to choose to participate in the live event uh, virtually if they couldn't travel or didn't, or, or, or didn't want to travel? Actually take the same program in real time, uh, at the same time together with the, with the physical world participants. The way we teach well, at MIT, as I said at the beginning, and, uh, is not simply by actually, lecturing could you just kill or the sound having a bit for that? people do exercises, but by having a lot of cooperation. So here, actually, you can see what the experience was. This is, uh, you may recognize Eric Brynjolfsson. Uh, he's teaching in the live physical classroom. Uh, the uh, virtual participants in, in this environment, we'll pan back in a second, they're actually uh, watching that live uh, podcast, that live video stream uh, direct from the live classroom. Uh, they, can, uh, they can go to breakout rooms at the same time as the real participants have a breakout. Our avatars uh, had a breakout uh, session in these rooms you see around uh, the sides. Uh, at the same time as there was table talk uh, or, or, or buzz groups, then the avatars could do that. And for me, the most amazing, interesting thing was actually see this uh, female avatar standing at a microphone. When she speaks into that microphone, she's actually talking to the live classroom in, in, in real time. So we had a real discussion going between the avatars and the, and the, and the human beings. And it led to some pretty interesting uh, interactions, actually. Uh, and uh, did that stop? Yeah. So you can see this is uh, just a little glimpse. And uh, we've actually got a demonstration outside if you'd like to take a closer look. Uh, this is really uh, was quite an extraordinary technology for us. It was, uh, it was pretty amazing to me how engaged people were. They really reported they felt like they were, they were there. So here's a, just a little uh, well, well, introduction that we, uh, yeah, that, that we filmed. Now, if you could bring the sound back up, please. These digital humans can express themselves through body language. They can wave, shake hands, clap, and one of our favorites, fist pump, to show enthusiasm. As you can see behind me here on the stage, we have several screens which we can change to show PowerPoint presentations, share desktops, share video, uh, or project the webcam image from the speaker. Here we've moved into a small breakout room where there are a number of collaboration tools available. 
The closer avatars stand to one another, the louder the sound, so it's easy to have small group conversations. It's easy to move around very fluidly and have conversations with individuals or with whole groups. And now, back to me live in San Francisco. So you see this, this creates some existential sort of issues as well. I finally figured out how to be in two places at one time using this virtual technology. <laughs> Again, I'm Peter Hurst, uh, and uh, this is our unreally engaging executive education. <laughs> Peter, thank you.